And for some reason, my camera's not working, but <laughs> I'm trying to get it going. And mine's been broken for a couple months now. And Olson C? That's me, me? Char Charlie Olson, Charles Olson. Charlie, you with the DEP or Parks? Uh, I'm with, no, I'm with DEP, Bureau of Water and Sewer Operations. Okay. Well, it's seven o'clock, so um, we're going to start the meeting and we'll call the roll. And um, this is from uh, the Parks and the uh, Environmental Committee. AJ, not here. Um, Robert Colligio is here. Yeah. Ben D'Amato? No. Uh, Jerry Ruggiero? No. That's right. And Fred Ginter? Yes. I'm here. Yes, he was at a week uh, Jennifer Miller from Parks, correct? And we have, uh, is it Anthony Oliveri? Robert Olivari. Robert, okay. Yeah, the R is for Robert. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, well, um, I think we plan to start on parks, uh, Jennifer. So what are you bringing to the meeting tonight? Uh, so I do have a little PowerPoint that I put together. So if possible, I will share my screen. So give me just one second. Could see it. Oh, yours, Jen. So, so if here, if okay, perfect. Yep. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Jennifer Miller. Um, I am on the uh, com borough com commissioner staff, so Commissioner Rick Ardon. Um, so I'm going to just give a brief overview of some of the things that are going on in parks right now. Um, and then we'll go over some events that are up upcoming. We'll go over um, some of the construction projects um, as well as um, other, other things throughout. So I'm gonna get started. Let's see how I, okay. It's bigger. Can you see the full screen or is it cut Maybe. off? Yeah. No, Cut off at the bottom. Of, at the bottom, can't see the park <clears throat> department logo, but we can see the contact info and questions at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, as you know, last year uh, was very uh, different. So, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the ways that parks um, help the community. So obviously parks were a respite for um, all of the Staten Islanders who were looking to get outdoors um, and kind of keep them from going stir crazy. So our parks definitely got a lot of use, um, which we're proud to, um, to host everyone. Um, parks did mass giveaways in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, we had COVID-19 testing sites. We had COVID-19 vaccination sites. Uh, we had a learning bridges program to help some of the students who were doing remote learning. Uh, we had information tables throughout the parks where um, constituents could pick up information about the various um, disease prevention and, and information and things like that, as well as social distance ambassadors uh, way back last spring when it was important that um, we slow the spread. So these are just some, some pictures of the mass giveaways that we did. Um, now we're gonna go into uh, recently completed capital projects. All three of these are located within community board two. Uh, so we're gonna talk about uh, General Douglas MacArthur Park. We're gonna talk briefly about Midland Field as well as Old Town Playground. So all uh, three of these came out of construction uh, within the last year. So this is MacArthur Park across the street from the Berry Homes. So it went under uh, a reconstruction uh, for the basketball courts, adult fitness equipment, as well as the um, synthetic turf fields. So this was the uh, schematic. And then here are uh, some pictures of the final product. I believe, Fred, you did join us for the ribbon cutting for that event. So yes, thank I you. Did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so now there's a beautiful new facility there. Um, there's still handball courts. There's still the playground. Um, and there's still the mini pool as well at that location, but uh, the pictures you see are, are the parts that were reconstructed within the last year. 
right, so next What's the week? outdoor uh, exercise equipment you installed? How's that working out? Is that holding up outdoors? Oh yeah, for sure. There's, there's a lot of those throughout the borough um, and they definitely get use um, on a daily basis from, from many people in the community. I grew up in the Berry Homes and I spent a lot of time with the parkies in that park. <laughs> oh yeah? So Jennifer, I just have a quick question about of course. Park. Uh, even at the ribbon cutting, uh, some sports people were concerned about the pitching mound that it wasn't, I don't know, I'm not a face that, you know, when you step off the mound, it was like sharp instead of like, you know, papers off. Have you heard anything about that? Yeah, so uh, we are in the process of procuring a new pitching mound per the specifications that were given to us. Um, so it, it should be there for, for next spring for sure. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so this is uh, Midland Field. Um, we redid the basketball courts as well as um, installed a new track, uh, like a mini track as well as a uh, field. It is all asphalt, um, but it is definitely an upgrade. Um, so here are some of the pictures yeah. there of the new facility. Three new basketball courts as well as the, the, the field. That. Um, and again, at Old Town Playground as well. Uh, this was part of a multi-site contract along with uh, Midland Field and Wolf's Pond Park um, in Community Board 3. So we overhauled uh, the basketball courts at each location. And here is the after um, shot. So this was one of the first ones to open of the three. Um, so this has been open for, for quite a while now. Um, and then Midland Field just recently reopened two or three months ago. With the track down at Egbert, is that being used by anybody but the school? Is there any meets there or anything? Um, uh, it, I don't know that it's a, an official track in that capacity. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of, of like a, a casual um, track because it is asphalt. It's not like the, the track material that you would find for, for like a track and field event. Um, yeah. But it's definitely, um, you know, it... it it fit in the space, so it's now a multi-use um, opportunity. So, so we were happy to put that in there. Okay, okay. talked about Old Town. Um, so now I'm gonna briefly just mention uh, projects that are still currently under construction um, in Community Board 2. So as everyone knows, the Dolphin Fountain unfortunately um, was damaged in Hurricane Sandy. So it is currently under construction to be, um, to be fixed. A lot of the work is being done kind of underground in the, the vault area. Um, so you won't necessarily see a lot of activity. Um, and at this point, we're probably gonna winterize it when it, when it is finally completed. Um, but by next uh, spring, summer, you'll have a, a beautiful new fountain that's, as you can see um, from this picture, um, that's there at South Beach. And then, one of the, the big projects, uh, Fresh Kills Park uh, North. This is uh, obviously a big development project. Um, when it's completed, it's gonna have new multi-use uh, pathways and overlook uh, area as well as a new comfort station. So obviously that's part of a, a huge undergoing, um, but it's, it's under construction right now for that um, location. Okay. And now these uh, next couple are projects that are currently in design or procurement. So we have Dongan Playground is currently um, undergoing design. Uh, Greenbelt Recreation Center, the uh, multi-use field is in procurement as well as Naples Playground is in procurement as well. Um, so here is uh, the Dongan Playground um, visioning session we did with the kids at the school. Um, this was pre-COVID obviously um, I believe we got it in right before um, COVID locked us down, um, but we took the, the kids' ideas and the um, Parks Capital team is working on designing the new playground over there. And then in procurement is a new uh, reconstruction of the field over at the Greenbelt Recreation Center. Um, when the, the construction project is completed, um, there'll be lights at this uh, facility now. But the Rick Center, are the, is the area with the tennis, uh, pickleball and basketball, is that open? And is the testing going to continue there with the uh, COVID testing? The testing is going to continue. Um, and I believe we are in talks right now to kind of take back 
um, some of the, the basketball that was shut down, obviously with um, the testing facility. So we'll keep you updated on that, but, but we do have plans to, to work something out where we can, can get back use of the facility. Yeah, maybe a different entrance to the testing site instead yep. of coming through the same basketball area. Yep, we are definitely working on it. Thanks. No problem. And then we have Naples Playground, again, in procurement. Um, the visioning session for this was before I came to park, so a couple of years ago, um, but we will um, be redoing the basketball area as well as the playground area. Here. And then I'm going to talk just about a couple of um, upcoming events. Obviously, we're going to ask that if you're sick, you stay home, maintain six feet of physical distance between households, wear face covering and wash your hands before you do come to any um, large gatherings at some of our parks. Um, on October 15th, there's going to be a green belt adult hike um, over at High Rock Park. Um, so that's going to begin at 11 a.m. So you'll have um, staff from the, the Greenbelt Nature Center um, leading a hike through the woods. Um, and it's definitely a great time to, to stroll through the, the forest and the trees with uh, all the leaves changing color. Um, in addition to that, there's gonna be a first forest discovery event. This one is for um, more geared towards kids. Um, so the um, education staff over at the, the Nature Center are gonna um, explore the critters that make up uh, make their home in the green belt. And it'll be a little hike as well. Um, there's gonna be Cruella, Movies Under the Stars showing over at the Ocean Breeze Athletic Complex. That's gonna be on October 22nd, starting at 7 p.m. Um, on the 24th of October, Ocean Breeze is doing their Halloween festival. So there'll be arts and crafts, pumpkin patch, uh, the puppeteers will be there and many uh, other Halloween themed activities. Um, in addition, we're partnering with the, the BP's office, the borough president's office, um, to do a Halloween event on October 27th uh, from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. Um, it's called the Green Belt Haunted Trail. So mm -hmm. you can bring the whole family out for some Halloween fun. They'll take a walk along the Haunted Trail um, and you'll get to go through the pumpkin patch and join in on arts and crafts as well. Uh, costumes are encouraged and prizes will be given out. So it'll definitely be a great event. I didn't include it on here, but there's actually two other events that we're partnering with the borough president on as well. One at Conference House Park um, in Community Board 3 and one at Walker Park in Community Board 1. So be on the lookout for those as well. And then we are, um, I don't know if you guys have heard, but New York City Parks is offering free uh, recreation center memberships. Um, there's no fees, no monthly payments, no catch. Uh, you do have to sign up before December 31st, um, and you do have to show proof of vaccination. But if you go and sign up, you'll get uh, a year-long uh, membership to the recreation centers. And just as a reminder, uh, Staten Island has four recreation centers, one at Favor Park, um, which is on Richmond Terrace. We have the Greenbelt Recreation Center. We have Lions Pool Recreation Center, and then Ocean Breeze Track and Field Athletic Conference. Complex, sorry. And um, so I know I came uh, to the meeting tonight and it, it's great for you all to have me, um, but the community board two contact is Christine Tumbarello. Tumbarello, unfortunately she had a scheduling conflict tonight, but if you guys have any questions um, or constituent issues, you could still uh, continue to reach out to her. So her information is there and with that, I'm happy to take any questions that you guys may have, either about some of the projects we went over or just in general. Anybody else? I have a few questions. Does anybody have any? Or Robin? Or, uh, no, I, I just want to compliment. Very good presentation. There's a lot of park activity going on at TB2. And yes. I'm happy to see all of that. So especially now with the uh, memberships, you know, in, in, in the facilities is fantastic. So thank you. Thank you. I'm good. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, friend. Jennifer, you think you could send this entire PowerPoint to uh, to me or to Deborah, so I can go over it as uh, at my leisure? <laughs> um, I should be able to. I don't necessarily want it just to be shared out to the general public. Um, okay. If you were looking for something like that, then 
then we, maybe we can have a conversation about maybe something else that might be better suited for that. Um, but I will definitely check in with you guys tomorrow on what, what we can send over. Okay. Um, I have a, a, a couple of things I'd like to, to talk to you about. Do you actually have a list of all the parks that we have in Community Board 2? Um, I can create one. Yeah, I, I'd love or to see a map. We'll create a map create and have a one. list. <laughs> I knew where most of these parks were today, but I'm not sure like, where one or two of them are. Um, gotcha. It's a great job you're doing on renovating all these places, you know, mm -hmm. to, to be more functional and uh, user friendly, it looks like, too, you know? Yeah, it's definitely exciting to, to see the renovations. Um, they're state of the art. They're, um, I don't know if you're familiar with um, EMT Christopher J. Prescott Playground, which is in Community Board 3. Um, but it is a now a uh, brand new uh, sensory playground. So we were excited to open that earlier this year. So okay. we're continuing to, to do as much as we can. Obviously a lot of our um, projects are solely funded by elected officials. So um, we, if they provide the money, then we definitely want to renovate the parks. Great. Um, you know, I don't know. Um what the problem is in the winter time, but at Lateret Golf Course, ending at Rigby Street and Edinburgh Road and going to uh, Richmond Hill Road, it never gets plowed. It's, it's some sort of problem between parks and sanitation. Sanitation doesn't do it and parks doesn't come up and do it. And you, and you get a thousand people up there uh, in the winter time, uh, sleigh riding and hundreds of kids. And there's, there's the parking lots aren't cleared um, and the streets aren't cleared. And it just, people actually were driving, putting their trucks up on the, uh, up on the golf course uh, in, in the greens area because there's no curbs or anything to stop them from getting up there. Uh, do you have any plans like in the winter time to actually have some people from parks there, maybe park enforcement or park uh, recreation people uh, somewhat maybe having a hot chocolate truck or because there's thousands of people there and there's no presence, there's no police presence, there's no parks present and the circle and the road never get plowed, including the, uh, the large parking lot, which is, um, the big gravel parking lot. Now, is that the parks department's parking lot or is that American staff responsibility to maintain that lot? So it's, uh, you know, as you mentioned, it's a concession for parks. So what I will do is forward your concerns to the parks concession um, to, to work out with the, the vendor. Because yeah, that parking lot there is like the Grand Canyon. It's just, it's been, uh, it's, I can't take my car in there. I don't know how people do at times, you know? But uh, it's in the, the whole course is somewhat in disarray. And I know that's with concessions, but um, and, and the the walking paths that were installed about five or six uh, years ago along um, Forest Hill Road, they're mm -hmm. getting all washed out and stuff too. And I don't know who who's uh, maintaining those. They're they're in pretty bad shape, um, especially Forest near Nome Avenue around that area. Um, you know, it's a, I spend a lot of times in the woods and the parks and the golf courses here, so I'm, I'm you know, familiar with it. And, you know, another issue with the Lotteret, when, when American Golf cuts down a tree on, on Lotteret Golf Course, they just dump it in the woods. I mean, if I cut a tree, I live on London Road adjoining the, the golf course. If I dumped a tree in there, I'd, I'd have major fines. But that's, and there's another trail that runs inside the park, and they just take their branches and throw it across. Speaking of branches across trees, when you have a storm, your guys do a tremendous job of removing the giant trees that go across the walking trail, the blue trail, the red trail. I don't know how they do it really, but they must just get out there with uh, hand tools and get these logs off. The, it's incredible that they're able to keep these walking trails clear. And within a week, I don't know if somebody's always checking them or what, but that's, you know, there's, there's the, the good and the bad sometimes with the maintenance, you know. Uh, even at Globe that. Lakes, you walk around the park, there's so much debris in the water um, along the edge of all the trails. Um, I guess we'd like to see a little better maintenance out there. And should I talk to you about this at a later date or? Uh, with uh, Christine? You could talk to obviously me, but Christine would be the, the point of contact, but obviously I'm gonna take everything that we talked about tonight um, and, and funnel it through the appropriate um, divisions within parks. Since you did mention Clove Lakes, um, just so you are aware, um, we do have now a fully funded project to redo all of the, the walking paths there. Oh. So yes, so that's currently in design as well. Um, so within the next few years, all the walking paths will be back up to par. Oh, great. Thank you. No that problem. Great. Thank you so much for being here tonight. No problem. So do we want to move on to the uh, DEP now? Sure. 
Okay. Anthony, thank oh, Robert, I'm Robert thank Oliveira. Thank Hi, how are you doing? So uh, Deborah had reached out to me about the meeting tonight, and you guys had some questions about the uh, blue belt system within uh, the, the District of Community Board 2 in Staten Island. Um, you know, Staten Island's a very unique borough. We have a lot of waterways, wetlands, and uh, DEP is trying to utilize this for uh, storm management, which is, as everyone knows after Ida, of paramount importance. Uh, Charles Olson, I asked him to be here because he is my go-to man about blue belts. And um, Charles, I'll let you, uh, just, you know, take it away. Thanks. Um, thanks, Robert. I, so on the agenda that I received from um, Ms. Derrico, it was, you, you guys seem to be specifically interested in the Mason Avenue job. Well, um, I, yeah, this is Robert from CB, the chair. Roy, this was in response to your request. Am I correct, Roy? Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned okay. about the pumping station. Okay, yes, that, it is Mason Avenue. Okay, go ahead, sir. Sorry, go ahead. Thank All right, you. my video doesn't work. Let me see if I have any luck sharing my screen. Hang on just a minute. Yeah, we don't have Anthony or uh, Olson. Can you see this map? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we got it. Yep. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. So just starting off with this table, which shows the schedule of the, the capital construction projects. Um, Two, three are currently under construction. Um, there's another one here that's, um, another one that's not really showing, it's the one that's on Highland Boulevard. The, the Mason Avenue job is down here 006. It's for fiscal year, currently scheduled for fiscal year 26. It's, it's a $48.4 million job. Um, so this, this map is, uh, you know, this map changes. I have, I have the most current iteration here, but um, it does between now and um, in fiscal year 26, it might change. So um, I'll, I'm just gonna show you where we are right now. This is the area that the Mason Avenue job was gonna be in, it's, it's scheduled to be in. Here's Highland Boulevard right here. And um, this is Mason. So what we're planning is, um, storm sewers and replacing of sanitary sewers. And what we found is that if we, um, if we increase the, the, uh, the storm capacity, there shouldn't, our understanding is that there's, there's storm water now going into the, to the sanitary system. And that was what was causing surcharging at the pumping station. And the pumping station has capacity. So the current capital project does not include replacing the pumping station. It includes providing new storm sewers. These are the, um, this area is under construction. All of this, all of the blue here, these sewers are um, almost completed. And this 04A is currently under construction. It's primarily the, um, the BMP that you see. If you, if you go down Highland Boulevard, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, they've yeah, raised the yeah. road. Like they're, they're really, yep. there's a lot of construction there. Um, so this is, this is actually pretty close. Well, it's, it's, it's going to be done in February. It's going to be largely done in February. Um, and then right below it, they haven't started on this yet. Um, this, they're just starting to, uh, spray the Phragmites now, but when it's done, you know, it's going to be a continuous landscaped area all the way down. And, um, the storm sewers, uh, this project includes the storm sewers in red, and um, and then, as I said before, the the uh, the Mason Avenue, what we call the Mason Avenue job, are these storm sewers in yellow. These others are a little bit further out. Um, we are going to be building this uh, this particular. Um, it's a, it's going to be a, a pond, but we're not going to have any sewers associated with it at this time. That's going to actually be awarded this fiscal year. Um, these areas, as you might know, this is like the Grimsby Street area and the area south of that. Um, it's going to be very complex to build these sewers, and we're probably going to have to do it in phases because they're going to have to raise the streets. And then you might be aware of the Army Corps project, the seawall. So as part of the seawall, the Army Corps is actually going to be building some of these BMPs down here. 
the seawall is going to be on the north side of Father Capadano? Uh, I believe it's actually going to be on the beach. Right. It's going to be on the beach, right, right, with, right with, in there, yeah. where the dune line is, it's supposed okay, to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's think what so. I think it is. Yeah. Now, are these storm sewers both storm sewer projects? They're both going to uh, empty into the holding areas? Yeah, well, yes. Now, some of these sewers actually go straight to um, there's a there's a there's a sewer there's a main trunk that goes down CV right here so some of these are going to be going to that to this main trunk some of them will will empty out into this BMP so I think these are coming into this BMP but these over here are going to go straight to this straight out the bay yeah the ones that go into the BMPs go to the Naughton Avenue sewer which is right down here there's another sewer that'll that, and these will be going through the seawall when it's built. There's going to be big tide gates associated with them. Hey, Roy, is, did uh, do you want to ask any specific questions about Mason Avenue? Yeah, yeah. The question I have is uh, the documentation I have in front of me is dated back in October 27, 2011. I was on the board at that time, actually, and they were talking about tripling the capacity of the pumping station. Because what happens when we get a rain, a heavy rain like the last storm we had, they shut it down and it backs up all into Dungan Hills Avenue in our basement. Right, and then, and then that's because the rainwater gets into the separate storm sewer system, but the rainwater is not supposed to get in there. So when we replace those pipes and we provide a separate storm sewer system, the rain shouldn't be getting in there. And that's why when we studied that, we determined that if we did that, the pumping station capacity shouldn't be an issue. It'll be okay. When will right. that be scheduled to separate the storm and the sanitary? Well, that's, that's going to be part of this job. Well, it's not, it's, there's no storm sewering. So I'm not, a, you know, there's, the, it's not real clear how the, how the storm water is getting into the system, but it is definitely associated oh, with storm water getting into the system. There is, my understanding is that there's no, there are no storm sewers there now. So we're gonna provide storm sewers. We're gonna drain the streets with the storm sewers. And then in, in addition to that, we're gonna be replacing the sanitary lines, which presumably have some, you know, there's, there's some kind of inflow or infiltration issue there that will then correct. And then there shouldn't be an issue with the pump station capacity. And the pump station will take just the storm sewer. That's this, the pump station will take just sanitary. Just the sanitary. pump station sends the flow to the wastewater plant at Oakwood gotcha. Beach. Okay. And the storm sewers will manage the, will manage the flooding on the streets. Yeah, but the, so problem, right. the problem is that, as I said, when we get a rain, they shut the pumping station down and we're dead. You understand what I'm saying? What happened to the triple capacity that they were going to build? If once we provide, once we, once we provide more reliable storm drainage, stormwater drainage, there shouldn't be a need to expand the capacity of the pump station. The pump station is currently overloaded during rainstorms. That shouldn't happen. It's a separate right. sewer system. You have a separate sanitary system from your storm system, but we don't have storm pipes in this neighborhood now. So we're gonna provide storm pipes and we're going to improve the sanitary pipes so they shouldn't get stormwater anymore. Mm -hmm. Then they will How is the stormwater going into the sanitary system? I don't know the details of that. Um, you know, there's there's a couple of mechanisms. That there could be breaks in the sanitary lines. Um, so I don't I don't really understand the details the, the details of why that happens. But what we have documented, um, as as the gentleman was saying, that it's associated with rainfalls when that when that pump station has problems, and so by by sealing. And keeping the system separate, we shouldn't have an issue. And what's your ETA on finishing two storm sewers? February, I'm um, sorry, fiscal year 26. So it's currently we're in fiscal year 22. So it's four years. So, Roy, the problem you're experiencing is going to be around for a while. That's yeah, what he's so saying. The question is if they have to shut down the pumping station. Well, they don't shut it down. They don't shut it down. Oh, yes. Yes, they do, because that's why it backs up. They stop pumping, they shut it down. They said it themselves many a time because they- Robert, is that what happens? Um, Robert Oliveri, is that what happens? The pumping station is shut down under one heavy rains? I have not been told that it shuts down like what's being yeah. described by Roy here. 
I don't think they can. If they shut that pump station down that's got extra capacity now, that whole area would be flooded up to the train station. Oh, my God. Well, that's what happens. I'm telling you, it floods the basement. Holy mackerel. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happens. The entire Dungan Hills area, everyone who has a basement, finished basement, with, with the bathroom in it, it backs up to the bathroom because they shut the station down. What they yeah, but it, do, what it they sounds do, like yeah, but it sounds like they have they have infiltration that they can't trace right now. Is that correct, Robert Oliveri? And they're trying to separate it, identify it, and yeah, truly so, make the sanitary sanitary and storm a storm system. Exactly. So Staten Island is unique compared to every other borough in that it has, for the most part, a separate sewer system. Except for Port Richmond, which does have a, some parts of it has combined sewers, and yeah. some parts of the island have no sewers whatsoever, whether sanitary or storm. Of course, like the Midland Beach area, for example, and parts of the South Shore. Um, so, we during Ida, we did experience our, our get notification from uh, from residents in Staten Island that they were getting um, sewer backups, which, as Charles said, with separate sewer system, that should not be happening. But it did happen, regardless of it happened, whether or not it should or whatever. And there are multiple theories about what could be causing this. Um, some have speculated that there might be people who have uh, their either their rain gutters or their um, um, san their uh, uh, what's it called their storm line as well or their sewer line to, for certain places tied into this into the sanitary sewer which can overload it so what we're trying to find out now is um you know which houses have this illegal tie-in because it is illegal they're not supposed to be able to tie into uh the sanitary system with their storm runoff and part of doing these projects will also kind of be like a reset for these locations where we'll dig up the street we'll see where people are located and then it will uh, correct that issue. Um, yep. And as Charles says, this will also um, help increase the capacity uh, of the uh, storm runoff in that um, it will be um, transferred from, you know, whatever whatever means it's getting into the sanitary system, it will then just be solely dedicated to a sewer pipe. And then the sanitary system should no longer be affected by storms because it will be brand new pipes and, we, and everything will be ensured to be separated, thus no longer causing uh, backups. So, it's an issue that, you know, that happened because of Ida and the influx of rainwater. And like I said, there's some theories about what had caused it. The main one I've been hearing is that people might have illegal tie-ins to uh, the sanitary system. Because as we all know, Staten Island was developed rapidly, haphazardly after the Bears on a bridge went up. Um, I, I, I'm pretty familiar with the, with the history of Staten Island growing up here and my father growing up here from 1950, where most of the island was farmland and an airport. So how would they make a how how would they make a connection to a sanitary system during construction? Hire a plumber to tie it in to their wow. uh, well, every house has two pipes leading from it. One's called a service line, which brings water into the house, and mm -hmm. one's called a sewer line, which brings sand, which brings like water out of the house and the intention of that water being, you know, sinks, washers, showers, things of that nature that would go to a uh, waste treatment plant to be treated because obviously it's dirty from human use. And, you know, people can hire, could hire someone yeah. off the books or they don't pull the right permits. They get like, you know, uh, an unscrupulous plumber to be like, okay, well, they took away my PVC pipe at the curb because it was illegal, but I don't feel like building a dry well. So, you know, hook up the pipe that would bring the water out. Because PVC pipes, there are openings that were at the curbs of houses that were legal at one point, but then it was made illegal. So some people, you know, hired a plumber, said, I don't want to go through the whole cost of building a drywall to retain water on my property. Just have whatever pipe was leading from my gutters into that PVC pipe in the in the uh, curb, just tie into my sewer line, and then it gets into our sanitary sewers. Mm -hmm. But Roy, getting back to your initial question, it sounds like, again, and I don't, I don't want to speak for DEP, but it sounds like, they have to come basically house to house to figure out where the where the water is coming from and then separate it out if there's an illegal connection to the sanitary system. I would imagine the store, what are your neighborhoods getting, Roy? That you don't know if that's storm or sanitary, do you? Or combination? Oh, that's sewer water because it's bad. Okay. Then there you all right, then there you go. Okay, then there you go. 
But yeah. it happens during rainstorms. Rain, yeah. only when the heavy rain comes, right? So, so be, the fact that you're getting a problem with your sanitary system during heavy rainstorms is pretty much proof that there are in, inappropriate connections. Connections, not supposed, exactly. There's exactly. not supposed to be a connection between your stormwater and your sanitary system in this area. That shouldn't happen. That's right. No. Exactly. It should be happening exactly. in any part of Staten Island. Anywhere, anywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, people <laughs> take shortcuts. It's unfortunately human nature. And like I said before, when the island was being developed, you know, people got away with all types of building violations that wouldn't be acceptable today or they were acceptable back then. And, you know, I don't want to harp on the past, but this is something that we have to deal with in the present day, unfortunately. All right. So drilling down now, the plan that's on the on the on the screen here is a large, obviously a large, a large plan of a large area. But getting into the weeds to the areas where people have backups, such as where Roy Garlisi lives, is there some sort of plan or what are they supposed to do or contact to get some sort of investigation, survey, inspection, something so that this these areas are on your books and you figure out how to, how to investigate and fix these problems for the people. Well, the best thing to do is, you know, I, and I already get, always get, you know, guff for this, but uh, <laughs> whenever you have a sewer right backup, now. you have to report it to three to one. So that way we know you're having a sewer backup, you know, DEP inspectors aren't already in your houses and we don't have any means of, of seeing where these things happen unless they're reported to us. Unless they're reported. So Deborah is always very good about forwarding me complaints. And then I give it to our Bureau for Warranty Operations to investigate. Um, we don't have the legal means to go into people's property and check their pipes as of yet. That would be a legislative thing. Um, new councilmen coming in might be something to propose to them when they get elected and, and, and inaugurated in uh, January. Um, but doing this type of work will also help see it as well, because we're going to be tearing open the street in order to put, make these installations. And all these people are going to have to reconnect to the sewers once they're built. Once they're built. Hey, Roy, have you made official complaint to DEP through Debbie? Yeah, so I, I spoke to a number of them. But the question is, I went down and saw that station. That station hasn't changed in years. And, and it and doesn't I, sound like it's going yeah. to, because when they figure out the infiltration and separate, it's got capacity as a sanitary pump station, it sounds like. They don't have to do anything to it. But it, it's, yeah, well, it's, it's so small to handle this entire area. The question is, if it doesn't, can handle the whole area, why don't they do something to pump it out into the swamp? Because it's right next to the swamp. Well, they can't pump you sanitary into no, the swamp. No, yeah, we, we can't, can't pump, pump sanitary water into no. the water bodies. <laughs> can't That's do that. Highly that would, yeah, that would be a health problem. <laughs> How's it going to be a health problem if it filters out into the water? It's sanitary sewer. It can't that you can't discharge it through a waterway. Yeah, go to what we're water. saying is when the storm sewers are there, that will take exclusively rainwater runoff from the streets. Then we can use natural water bodies. Right. But as of yet, those so those storm pipes are not in the street. It's just They're not there yet. Yeah. Human waste. That's we correct. cannot put that into water bodies legally, or morally, for that matter. Yep. It's yeah. not going to happen, Roy. They can't do it until they separate the system exactly. So they know that sanitary goes to Oakland, Oakwood Beach, and everything else goes to the shoreline here. Mm -hmm. the, the question is, though, when they shut it down, why do they have to shut it down? Because they But they don't shut it. They says they never shut it down, Roy. It's a matter of capacity. It gets overcapacitated by due to the influx of stormwater into a sanitary pipe, which is the, does not, not designed to take in storm water to begin with. Uh, Mr. Oliver, uh, can I ask you one more question? Uh, how high are the streets gonna be raised in comparison to the level that the houses are currently? The um, storm sewer project. That's something I have to look into because I don't have that information in front of me. Um, it'll probably be per a DOT standard, um, but I can find out for you at least and get okay. you that information. Also, I see um, Susan, Paul Cologne has a hand raised. Question, she wanted to know about the map. Is the map available? Um, this map that's on the screen is about a public- I'm, I'm gonna have to, shit. it's not my map. I have to, I'll have to, uh, to ask the, um, the capital planning group if they, if, if they would accept releasing this. Remember this, these, these maps change at least once a year. So yep. even if I did release it, it, it would look different a year from now. Um, but I'll I'll I will ask uh, 
Ms. Derrico actually also asked if I could if I could give it to her. So I will uh, tomorrow. I'll ask the capital planning group if I can release this to the community board. Okay, thank you. Also, looking at this map, I know some of these streets don't even have sanitary sewers as well, like Graham Boulevard. I've been getting calls from Mr. Kruger's on that street over and over again about when we're going to be installing because they're on they're on septic there. So this whole area is going to be vastly improved with these projects. It's just going to take time, and that's the schedule. Well, it's also, to take... I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, not but sorry. also, recently we had budget consultations, which is an opportunity for community boards to say, "Hey, you know, we've been having this flooding issue in this neighborhood for X amount of years, and now it's getting worse and worse." You know, they can advocate for projects to be moved up when when the uh, ability is available by both the funding of from through DEP and the availability of the Department of Design and Construction, who is the agency that is responsible for actually building out the systems for us and for every other um, agency for that matter. They're the, they're the agency that handles capital projects. So as I see, the funding has been put forward um, in the, you know, the key there. So, you know, this would be a great opportunity for uh, Deborah to come and, you know, send us, and send us um, notifications advocating for these uh, projects to either be moved up or greater prioritization. And then if it can be accommodated by the agencies involved, exactly. then, you know, by all power to you guys then. Exactly. And I've been, I've been talking to her and coaching her through like a lot of this stuff because, you know, she's very active in trying to help out everybody here and really cares yep. about the community. Yep. <laughs> well, just so you know, some years ago, they did raise up Buell Avenue for stormwater systems also okay just uh in case you didn't know that i had another question oh uh we're doing a lot of stormwater um a lot of drainage systems they did uh some years back a uh, big job at the uh, highland and uh, midland by the pizza yeah. but yet it still floods so um that, that well, i believe you're talking about the the midland beach blue belt that was built out there near Hunter Boulevard, I think, is the, or it's near. That's this one. Yeah, so after it was built out, after that was built, we then proceed to expand outwards with our sewer system. But as you well know, a lot of these locations here have no storm sewers whatsoever, or no sanitary sewers for that matter. But for the sake of this conversation, we'll talk about storm sewers. Um, so since, the, since this is a blue belt, it's a natural waterway that we use for storm runoff, after that was completed, next is to build out the storm sewer that will then uh, utilize this natural wetland for runoff. So yeah, you're still mm -hmm. experiencing flooding there because, I mean, I see Grimsby here, Lake Grimsby, everyone knows about that, Freeborn mm -hmm. Street. I got plenty of calls from uh, Simon Tanousis' office about that location saying, you know, people, people on that street are asking us to uh, open up a floodgate, which isn't a thing for that location because there are no storm sewers there yet to open anything for any case so you're still seeing flooding there because all the, all these color coding you're seeing here are going to be the the means of removing that water in the future all righty uh one last uh comment you uh talk about and i've heard about these illegal hookups that went on for many many years uh i do recall at one time dep was doing some kind of testing to identify it i just don't recall what it was are you familiar with that um, it's been more of a conversation. I've, I've been with the agency for four years next month. Mm -hmm. So um, well, around that, around what time were you, was, was that occurring? Uh, I, believe? I could be going back 10, 15 years. Okay. I think they were using some kind of a dye, if I remember, and it was identifying, you know, who was illegally hooked up to the uh, storm sewer with a sanitary sewer. So that's obviously before my time, unfortunately, but I can... I just thought I'd bring it up, so maybe you might uh, look into that. Uh, oh, no, how they did that back then, and then they stopped. Oh, no, that's a great that's a great thing. And like I said, with Ida, you know, it brought it back to the forefront again because so many people on the island, throughout the island, not just, mm -hmm. you know, in Community Board 2, I was, in, I was at the, the Westerly Civic Association last night, in fact, and numerous people there experienced sewer backups. And now it's really brought it back to the forefront again because it wasn't such a prevalent issue for a long time, apparently. Mm -hmm. But on top of Ida and Henry, for that matter, 
on average now we're seeing a higher amount of rainfall than was ever anticipated. Exactly. Per engineering exactly. standards, exactly. our sewers exactly. for the longest time were built between one to 1.75 inches. Those are no longer capable of taking what we've been experiencing for the past three years, let's say. Yep. So um, big thing is we're rewriting basically the whole drainage plan for the whole island to try to accommodate the new reality that we're all facing, you know, whether it's um, global warming or whatever you want to call it. The fact of the matter is it's raining more than ever and the whole system needs to be updated. And exactly. part of that would also be including that, you know, the sewers operate the way they are by getting rid of felonious connections because Staten Island has a separate system. It's the only borough out of all of New York City that has a separate sewer system and it should function the way it's supposed designed to so that way people don't get the backups. Have, have the, the problems, basket. right, exactly. Steve, I have to excuse myself. I just wanted to thank everybody on here for attending tonight. I um, appreciate that. And um, we'll look forward to hearing from Steve and, and Fred at the uh, full board meeting. Thank you, everyone. I'll be back. Thank you. Thanks for attending, Robert. Um, now, were there any members of the uh, public that uh, signed in that have any questions or want to say anything? Can we go back? To, uh, are, are you done, Mr. Oliveri? Um, I saw someone run the chat about um, the age of the sewer because it was upgraded in 1970 and it couldn't handle uh, Sandy. Yeah, a lot of the sewers are pretty dated. I mean, some of Manhattan are from like the late 1800s, early 1900s for that matter. So yeah, it's a capacity issue. Whoever wrote that into the chat, you know, you're right. It was done a long time ago. And these things are done on very long overtime fiscal year planning. And, you know, the whole way we go about doing construction of any type in New York City has incredibly changed from 1970, where like, you know, whether it was the rules weren't there or you could just give an inspector from DOB a couple of bucks to do whatever, whatever you felt like doing at that time. So the city's come a long way with construction and it's still going more of a way. And every year we're facing new and new realities. Um, and, you know, you know people, like to bring, people like to relate this to Sandy a lot of the times, but Sandy, while a devastating storm was different in that Sandy was a coastal surge, meaning all those neighborhoods along the shoreline got flooded out because of the coastal water coming in. With the remnants of Ida, it came straight from the sky. So places inland that had never ever seen flooding were inundated with feet of water. So it's really a challenge and a hurdle that we're gonna have to overcome and we're working st steadily to do so. And we're keeping our fingers crossed also for some federal funding if Congress can ever get their act together. Well, anything that can be done to speed up this uh, area down Midland Beach, they've been hit for so long, so hard. And there has been no relief for them for years and years. And uh, anything that could speed up this project would be uh, greatly appreciated. Yeah, I could tell you stories from when I worked on Midland Avenue in the build back office. I had to crawl across the hood of a car to unlock it because the whole street was flooded. And that was in 2016. Yeah, well, it goes back to the 60s, the 50s. It's been going on forever. It's, it's really not fair to the people who live there and pay their taxes that they don't have these services. I know um, well, thank you for all the information. Uh, of course. Just a quick note uh, regarding parks. I think our website has the location of all the parks within our board. Oh, great. So Thanks. Our for... website it has it all. Okay. We'll have to catch up. Okay, thank you. Um, well, if there aren't any other questions, uh, I think we've gone into the meeting. If anybody else has anything else they want to say. Good job. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you for having us. I appreciate okay. it. Good night, everyone. Thank Good you. Night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.